All right, it's time for one of my favorite sections of the course called the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now in this section, I'm gonna walk through some examples that I feel are strong, weak, and downright ugly cases of data visualization. So first, let's start with the good. Here we have a nice overlapping area chart. It shows political polarization in the US. It also has an option to change the date range to show animations over time. Really nice, really simple, really effective. Next, we have a custom-built pacing chart where we're looking at cumulative revenue over time uh, against a goal or a target. And here we're using some really clever dynamic formatting rules to shade the difference, different colors based on whether we're underpacing or overpacing that target. And third, simple, intuitive, custom-designed gauge chart. This chart is really only intended to show one thing, which is where a particular value falls along a given range, in this case from 0 to 100%. But it's a nice example of how to combine individual chart types in Excel to create something brand new and totally unique. So the good news is that I'm going to show you how to build all three of these types of charts at the end of this course, along with many, many more. So stay tuned for that. Which brings us to the bad. First case here, we have a really busy, really cluttered radial chart. Uh, this is one of those cases where it seems to be really heavy on design and really light on function, uh, meaning I might print it out because it looks nice, but I really don't know what sort of insight I'm supposed to derive from this. Second, we've got a line chart with just way too many data series. There's no legend. There's no clear narrative. I don't even know where to, to start with this one. And then third, good example of a misleading chart type. We're looking at monthly sales from September through January here. Technically, this is valid because the percentages do add up to 100%. The problem is when you're trying to show uh, relative volume or trending over time, there are other charts that communicate that much more effectively, uh, like column charts or line charts. Last but not least, we've got the ugly. Here's one of those cases where you know it's just way too many elements. There's a distracting 3D design Another clear-cut case of all design, no function. Next up, we have what seems to be a really simple chart, which is total revenue April versus May. Now, if I asked you, tell me what happened month over month, you might be tempted to say, well, Chris, it's pretty clear that revenue plummeted in May. Now, my response would be, take a look at the y-axis, because the minimum is 175K, and the maximum is only 189 which means we're looking at a pretty thin slice of the data here. And in fact, when you zoom out, that story completely changes in the context of the bigger picture. So that's why it can be really dangerous to incorporate misleading axis scales. Last but not least, or perhaps last and least, we have this infographic style visual, which uses improper use of percentages. They don't add up to 100%. On top of that, we've got inconsistent scaling. So somehow the 78% the slice is actually thinner than the 61% slice. And in this case, the visualization actually does nothing but detract from the data itself. So there you go, some examples of good, bad, and ugly data viz.